So Day of the Departed was a Halloween special released on Cartoon Network in 2016 for the Ninjago franchise. And for four years now, it has become one of the most hated scenes to come out of Ninjago. And I would like to talk about that. Obviously, you guys can see inside of my rankings that I do have Day of the Departed as the lowest season on my list. But also, I think it is quite enjoyable. It's a worthy, quote-unquote, season for Ninjago. I just think that it has a lot of problems with it that shouldn't have been inside of it. So inside of this video, I will be talking about the backlash of Day of the Departed, why it got that backlash, and how that backlash could have been avoided. And basically, a... And basically a pitch for my Day of the Departed season. Hey everyone, S the Up Nation here and welcome back to a brand new Ninjago video here on the channel. I would like to stop and take the time to talk about the hate and backlash of Day of the Departed and pitch my own Day of the Departed season. Please know that everything that I will say in this video is just my very own opinion and you are free to comment down below what did you think of Day of the Departed and also happy Halloween everybody. So without further ado, let's get right into my pitch. So Day of the Departed, like I said, is a Halloween special and the main purpose of it was to kind of sell toys. That's the main purpose of it. The main purpose of Day of the Departed was to sell toys. But honestly, it had an interesting concept that could have worked as a season. You have the Departed villains coming back to face the ninjas for round two. And essentially, the ninjas are not really prepared for it. And also, you have this other storyline with Cole fading away that we got set up in the first scene of Day of the Departed. So Cole is fading away. The ninjas really don't remember him anymore after he fades away truly. And then he goes to fight Sensei Yang to get his revenge on Day of the Departed. He accidentally releases the cursed souls of the villains. And that's how they get revived. And honestly, I felt like that was a great way to kind of progress the story. If it was all Cole's fault... And this was his and and this was his own season. I felt like that worked perfectly well. But I think that the main problem here is the fact that the ninjas defeat the villains way too quickly. The way I see it, the main purpose of each season is that the ninjas have to come together to defeat the villain at the end. So then when you have a special like this one that just rushes through the plot and just tries to shoehorn in the villains and have the ninjas defeat the villains by themselves split up in two to three minutes you kind of cause a little bit of dysfunction inside of your special. So basically, my pitch starts off just like the regular Day of the Departed, but actually we're going to have the alternate Day of the Departed first scene in there with the ninjas training, just, just to see, okay, this is still a family, they're still a team, they still work together, they still remember each other. That's great, because inside of the special, they split up, you don't really get to see them as a team as much. So then they get the call. We have to make it to the museum. So they race to the museum. And then it's just going to start essentially how it started in the first day of the Cole Departed. Cole walks off. He finds the Ying Blade. And it calls to him. So he walks off over there. And they essentially just forget about Cole. Now, the one thing that they don't really specify is how they forget about Cole. Is it because he's just faded away or is it because he's a ghost? My guess is that it's the Ying Blade, so I'm going to keep that inside of my season. So just like the original Day of the Departed, Cole is going to accidentally release the Departed Souls from the Departed Realm, and they fly right back into the villains. But this time, Pythor is not going to be there. I'm going to take Pythor all the way out of this season, mainly because Pythor does not need to be there. He's already had his redemptive arc inside of Season 4. We haven't seen him since Day of the Departed. He does not need to be inside of my season. So inside of my season, I'm going to have Day of the Departed span over two days. Inside of the special, it spanned over one night. But I want to have it span over two days because I want to give it enough time to actually breathe. I want to give it enough time to expand more on Sensei Yang's character, expand more on Cole and Sensei Yang's arc, and also expand more on the ninja fighting the departed villains coming back. And I want to see that. I want to see that type of fan service that we really didn't get to get inside of Day of the Departed. All we got was the sets and really the sets were pretty cool but I still wanted to see it inside of the special. See the ninjas fight the departed villains. For six episodes we're going to have the ninjas fighting the villains. Essentially the first half of the season is going to all be about the departed villains coming back and for the last four episodes it's all going to be about remembering Cole, establishing that arc between Cole and Sensei Yang, their relationship, and also establishing the Sensei Yang character motivation and his arc going throughout this special, going throughout this season. So in episode one, we're going to establish that the ninjas forget about Cole 
through the end blade and the ninjas go off to celebrate day of the departed with their family so at the end the departed villains wake up they blink their eyes and that's how the episode ends so when we get inside of the second episode yang fills them in gives a little bit of exposition on why there's going to be a two-day period of day of the departed because he did something with the yin blade and now he's created a two-day period of Day of the Departed, which everybody thinks that it's just a lunar eclipse, but actually Yang is the one that's causing Day of the Departed to happen over two days. So after the first episode, for five episodes, we're going to have each episode of a different ninja fighting a different villain. So we're going to have Kai versus Chen, Nia versus Samu Kai, all of that. But in each episode, we're still going to have that central story going on with Cole being forgotten and Cole trying to fight Sensei Yang and also Cole's and Sensei Yang's relationship inside of this season. And then in the last four episodes, we double down on that with giving more of a backstory to Sensei Yang to see where he's coming from and to see his motivation. This way, we can understand Sensei Yang as a villain and we can see whether he's sympathetic enough for us to actually feel for him or to actually care about what he is doing because obviously he is a true believer in what he is doing but it does kind of get retconned and it does kind of get rewritten at the end of the special but no he's still going to be the same villain he's just going to have a sympathetic backstory Real quick, before I get back into my pitch, I'd like to take the time to say that if you are a fan of Ninjago, which you probably are, that's why you're watching this video, click that playlist up above for everything Ninjago related that I have on my channel. Also, if you are a fan of the MCU, we have completed our MCU rewatch, and we will be uploading a ranking of all 23 movies from the worst to the best on Monday. So go over there and check out the regular podcast, link is always in the description and in the comment section. Without further ado, let's get back into my pitch. So before the final battle, the ninjas meet back up, but they still haven't remembered Cole. So inside of the season finale, is going to take over a span of two episodes, just like season five with the Cursed World part one and part two. This way we can have the departed villains with their henchmen coming back to try to defeat the ninja. And also on the ninja's side, we're going to have to find a way to have Moro on their side and have Moro fight against the departed villains. Meanwhile, we have Cole fighting Sensei Yang on top of the Temple of Air Jitsu with his new RX form. He gets his RX form an episode before the season finales. So part one of the season finale, we're going to have Cole versus Yang, but since he doesn't know how to use his RX form, he does lose the fight pretty easily. And then on the battle on the ground floor, we're going to have the ninjas and Wu and Moro fighting the departed villains and their henchmen. And also, I think having Moro fight his henchmen, I think that would be a cool battle to see. So Cole is still a ghost. He doesn't know that the ninjas still remember him. And also, he's still losing the fight against Yang. He's growing tired and Yang just keeps fighting and fighting. So the ninja temporarily defeats the departed villains for the second time and they get inside of the bounty and they fly up to the temple of Erjutsu because they speculate that's where Cole is going to be. Just like in the original Day of the Departed, they call out his name and he sees his friends and he sees that they haven't forgotten about him, that they remember him. He gets right back up, he gets the confidence again, he gets the energy again. And his RX form is once again awakened, but this time it's much stronger than it actually was when he awakened it the first time. The first time, that was just a test run. This time, it is the actual RX form, and he fights Sensei Yang with it. In doing this, he then punches the Yin Blade, just like in the original Day of the Departed, destroys the Yin Blade. That, in turn, destroys the departed villains. We start off this episode with Cole and Sensei Yang fighting, getting his RX form, and then he destroys the Yin Blade midway through, and then the departed villains slowly fade away. Just like Moro, Moro is on the Destiny's Bounty with the ninja team. He looks at Sensei Wu. They both have a certain respect for each other, and he fades away also. Thus ending that whole little arc with the villain plotline, but it's going to be set up and it's going to have payoff in the end. It's not just going to be the ninjas fight them for two to three minutes and then they disappear. No, throughout the entire season, the villains keep coming back. They keep coming back. And the only how that they were able to defeat the villains was having Cole reverse everything that he did inside of the season. Essentially, the entire season happens because of Cole. So inside of my pitch for a season, inside of the entire season, Cole is the main reason why the departed villains come back. He is the main reason why the 
day of the departed happens over two days because of the fact that he awakened the yin blade the yin blade called onto him but he was the one that opened up the case because he wanted revenge against sensei yang so just like in day of the departed there is going to be some rewrites inside of the season to show that sensei yang is still a sympathetic character but he is still a villain so cole and sensei yang they have a sit down talk about their two ideologies they both air jitsu up there inside of the rift but only one can stay behind so just like in the original so Sensei Yang gives up his life for Cole and Cole turns back into a human at the end of the season. So this way, the season has Cole yearning to be human again. He wants to be human again. He wants to feel things again. So then at the end, he gets exactly what he wants and he becomes human again. Due to the conversation that they had, Yang now realizes that he was the villain of his story because nobody is actually the villain of their own story. Sensei Yang realizes that what he did that he thought that he was doing for his students and for himself was actually hurting him and his students. So he changes his ways, he fixes up the Temple of Air Jitsu, and he also takes away the spell that was cast into Ninjago that made the citizens forget about their loved ones. The only reason why the ninjas remembered Cole again was because they were inside of the museum when the first spell was cast. So peace falls onto Ninjago once again. And just like inside of the special, Cole is retelling the story of Day of the Departed one year later. And I think that that was a cool scene to have because it showed that it all did happen, but it happened like a year ago. And Cole is still retelling the story of how he saved Ninjago. And I think that that is pretty cool because this is his season. He's made mistakes and the entire season revolves around Cole making those mistakes and reversing those mistakes, making up for those mistakes. And in turn, for him defeating Yang and as a reward for defeating Yang and the departed villains, he becomes human again. And I think that has a lot of payoff to what was set up inside of season five. So that was my pitch for a day of the departed season, 10 episodes spanning over two weeks. And I think that that would have been perfectly fine with the last episode concluding on a Halloween day. So please like, comment, and subscribe, comment down below. What did you think of my whole pitch and comment down below if you would like to see me kind of rewrite the entire day of the departed, but also add in my episodes and rewrite the episodes themselves. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will upload some more Ninjago videos next week. They come out every Saturday. Also, happy Halloween, everybody. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.